Good morning, my dear friends, and welcome to Friday Morning Prayer. I was away in another spit time and space there, listening to that beautiful Gregorian chant. Oh, it's so beautiful. And it brings back so many lovely memories for me, because that's how we used to pray to God six times a day when we chant the divine office and it is lovely but not if you've not got good voices but anyway it's good to welcome our dear sister sue and jan and i have a feeling brother Kaj is here with us but not logged in so this morning we light this light and we give thanks to god for all the gifts we receive for the blessings we receive, for our abundance. But more importantly, we give thanks to God for never giving up on us. Though we give up on ourselves, God never gives up on us. So I light this light this morning for your intentions, for all our beautiful brothers and sisters around the world, for dear Miriam in New Zealand, for Brother Kaj and Paula in Finland, for Brother Matthew, our new assistant abbot in America, overseeing our new foundation there with Sister Sandy in East Texas, Sister Mary in Michigan, Sister Eleanor in Philadelphia, Sister Buffy in Carolina, Sister Laura in Louis Louisville and of course not forgetting dear sister Linda in Connecticut for brother Brian our Franciscan trucker and not forgetting Olivia brother Rob and Paul and brother Murray sister Laura in the UK with sister Jane in Ormsker dear sister Diane in Lee Teresa and the many who've come and gone we light this light and we say, Lord, thank you for your vision to unite your children in one place like here, where we can come without our baggage and embrace a God of love. Amen. So we ring our bells, our little Tibetan bells that weigh a ton for unity and peace. And our prologue this Friday morning. We enter the eternal and infinite garden with reverence to the heavenly Father, Mother God, the earthly Mother and all the great masters and reverence to the holy, pure and saving teaching and reverence to the brotherhood and sisterhood of the elect. Friday morning we commune with the angel of air saying, Angel of air, enter my lungs and give the air of life to my entire body. And as you say this, you contemplate on the atmosphere around you as you connect with the rhythm of your breathing. So we take a nice deep in breath and we breathe in God's sacred air. And in our out breath, we release a blessing to the angel of air and give thanks for the quality of air we have especially here in a rural community where the air is so pure unlike those living in cities where it's densely infected with all forms of toxins and carbon monoxide poisoning so we give thanks now our opening prayer is from the Book of Celtic Prayers. I awake this morning in the presence of the holy angels of God. May heaven open wide before me, above me and around me, that I may see the Christ of my love and his sunlit company in all the things of earth this day. That's a lovely prayer. But there's a lovely one coming now from the book of prayers from ordinary people. 
and it's from Dr. Jonathan Sachs, the, the current chief rabbi for, the, for uh, England. And he's a wonderful man. And he's taken this prayer from the ancient Jewish traditional. It says, this prayer taken from the daily morning service of the Jewish prayer book affirms the essential goodness of humanity, the gift of life itself, and our need to be mindful that it is given to us by God in order to do good while we are here on earth. Oh my God, the soul which you placed within me is pure. You created it, you formed it, you breathed it into me, and you preserve it within me. You will one day take it from me, but will restore it to me in the hereafter. So long as the soul is within me, I will give thanks to you, O Lord, my God, and God of my fathers, Master of all works, Lord of all souls. Blessed are you, the Lord, who restores the souls of the dead. That is lovely. And our hymn from our Unitarian brothers and sisters. And we read hymn number 197. We walk the holy ground of earth. We walk the holy ground of earth, which you, O oh God, have made, a jewel in space to be our home, in velvet darkness laid, in endless miracles of life, a wondrous web you weave, and for creation's tapestry, your people's thanks receive. But we have torn its subtle treads, befouled its colours bright, our pride has led us to destroy where wisdom should delight. We now repent the foolishness which led us to despoil, which made us aliens in the world, though moulded from its soil. Creator Spirit, God of love, complete what you've begun. Restore our fractured consciousness that this world may be one. That's by Clifford Martin Reed born in 1947. Isn't that a lovely hymn? We walk the holy ground of earth. I remember many years ago reading something from Maya Angelou, whom I've always loved. And she referenced about sacred footprints. And I believe today God has enough people talking about God. What I sense in my heart as a member of the Teo community is that we are each called to leave sacred footprints on this sacred earth. So wherever we go, wherever we visit, we bring in our sacred footprints the love of our God and Mother Earth. And in those footprints, we bring an energy, an energy that's positive, not loaded with negativity, but an energy that's fueled and fed by God's love and our love of God, whom we meet in creation in the Cathedral of God. So remember, each footstep you take when you leave home is a sacred footprint. And if your heart is in alignment with your higher self, it is my belief that if you're singing the praises of God quietly to yourself, or just praying, for example, the Lord's Prayer, or just your mantra, you're leaving a blessing in your footprints. So now, 
our first reading. I place my books everywhere and one of these days they'll fall on me. I've got piles of books here, here, around here, so I'm open to what the Spirit is saying to me. Although I come prepared, but it never works out that way. God always has his way. And that's the beauty of about being open to God. So this Friday morning, the 19th of Jan, we look at the difference between Samson and Samuel, part three. Difference three focuses on the motives. Samson repeatedly dishonored the Lord by his actions and his lifestyle. That's because he had no regard for God's honor. What a contrast Samuel was. When Israel wanted a king in order to be like all the surrounding nations, it broke his heart. He said to the people, the Lord your God was your king. Honoring God was his highest priority. And there's a lesson here for us, especially those in ministry. <clears throat> Every time someone steps behind a pulpit, they must check their ego and ask themselves the motive question, is my aim to make God look good or myself look good? And it's a hard question to answer. The Bible says, for the Lord is the God of knowledge and by him actions are weighed. The truth is, that without the power of God's indwelling spirit, none of us have what it takes to do the job. And we must never forget that. The tragedy of Samson's end, it is described in these scriptures. He awoke from his sleep and said, I will go out as before at other times and shake myself free. But he did not know that the Lord had departed from him. So it happened when their hearts were merry that they said, call for Samson that he may perform for us. So they called for Samson from the prison and he performed for them. Note the word perform. Without God's grace and power, we are all at best just performers. So stay humble and seek only to exalt the Lord. Wow. Those words are ringing in my ears. There is so much wisdom in this wonderful story about Samson and Samuel. I want us to be still and to just come into our heart. And as we come into our heart, let us now invite, invoke, and call upon the Lord our God, the God of many names and none. Oh, oh, oh. 
God of all the earth. Isn't that really uplifting? It really dusts the cobwebs from you. But now let us just come, be still, and invite, invoke, and call upon our God to touch us, to set us free from those negative mindsets as we come into the presence of love. Behind me, you will see the Franciscan cross of San Damiano on the wall and below it is a beautiful gift I received from Brother Paul for Christmas. It's a hand carving, namaste, in different colours. And below that, on the altar, you might see the outline of a small black box. In that box, there is a silver with gold inlay, and inside that is the Blessed Sacrament the consecrated host to represent the body of Jesus. It's called a pyx. And it's here for a purpose. So that Christ isn't only present in you, he's all around you. And he's here guiding my heart. Not to inflate my ego, but to nurture my heart so that I speak his word from a place of love. So let us relax now. Let us be still as we come into the presence of love. Because the God you and I love is love. And in a matter of two or three weeks we will be entering Lent, those of us who are Christian, who observe the 40 days of Lent, preparing us for Easter Sunday, for the resurrection of Jesus, where we celebrate his life over death. But today we're calling on the Lord God to empower each one of us to arise from our slumber, our depression, our sickness, weariness. Whatever ails us, we're asking the Lord Christ to be our power, to be our inspiration, and to come to us and touch us. So let's focus on our in-breath now as we take a nice, deep, non-labored in-breath and hold it and now release whatever may be heavy on your heart and give it to the Lord our God and relax. And now just continue with the rhythm of your own breathing and be mindful that Christ is before you. The Son of God who gave his all for you is before you. Just sit in his presence and allow his love heal you in your mind, in your body, in your spirit. Stay centered. In this love and allow Christ's healing light flow through every part of you, leaving no nerve ending 
or tissue cell without his love. And let's now open those interior chambers in our memories, those skeletons and shadows, those ghosts of painful past memories. Let us allow his light penetrate those hidden recesses of our memories and of our heart. Maybe we've been deeply hurt by others and instead of facing them and releasing them to God, we've just buried them in our subconscious mind and they weigh us down. So we let the Lord God into those hidden chambers and we allow him bless and release from us now all those painful memories. And we bring also to the Lord those whom we loved, who abused our gift of love, and those who loved us but whose love we abused. Let us just sense the peace and the healing touch of Christ. And let us bring to the Lord Jesus our own foibles, failings, indiscretions, insecurities, anxieties, and just leave them with God. And we bring to the Lord Jesus those whom we love, who are hurting, leaving us feeling utterly helpless, not knowing what to do for them for best, other than to send them love and hold them in prayer. Let us bring them now to the Lord. So we name, we bless, we release to Christ Anything, everything, anyone, everyone who may have disempowered us or we disempowered them and we bring them to Christ in a mindset of love and gratitude and we leave them with Jesus. And instead of repeating the request over and over, revealing a lack of trust, we trust in Christ by thanking him every day for answering our prayer when he knows we are ready to receive it. But I just want you to focus on his face, that gentle face, the skin well worn because of the rays of the sun in the desert, the long hair disheveled, maybe with a lot of sand in it from the sandstorms. But focus more on the eyes the eyes of Christ, piercing blue, almost as your blue. Just look into his eyes. And what do you see? You see a young man 
who calls you to love, who calls you to liberation and freedom, who calls you to trust in him, not in your ego. He calls you to agape, to feast at the table of the Lord. And now, feel his arms around you, sense the power in those arms as he draws you to his heart and experience him kissing you on each of your cheeks and now releasing you from all that has weighed you down. And as you take an in-breath, you're breathing in that liberation. And in your out-breath, you are saying, thank you, Jesus, for allowing me to have a new day, knowing that I am loved, protected, and provided for. And we say, blessed be the name of the Lord our God, who made heaven and earth for me. Blessed be the name of the Lord our God, who has now touched me and who fills me with his love. Amen. And we bring to this table each one of you here. We pray for Sue and her dear friend Kath, for Jan and her dear friend Sonia with multiple brain tumors and her brother Lawrence. But we bring Jan and her family and her, their ministry there in St. Helens but they do reach out to your vulnerable children who have special needs. We ask you to bless that ministry. For all our brothers and sisters in the Teo community, we say, Lord, thank you. Thank you for the commitment and the love from those in formation who are so committed and dedicated, it brings tears to your eyes to see the, the love they have for each other and how they reach out to one another. What a joy. Thank you for protecting our community today, Lord, and for laying your healing hand on Diane, on Eleanor, on dear sister Sandy in East Texas, who spent the night without heat because her butane gas cylinder went empty and should have been filled, but because of the density of the snow, it couldn't be filled. And the temperatures were below freezing. So we pray for dear Sandy today, who's quite disabled following her stroke but such a positive lady and such a spiritual soul. For dear sister Mary in Michigan and dear Laurie in Louisiana and of course Linda in Connecticut and all our brothers and sisters, we say, Lord, thank you for this loving family and for all our prayer partners for peace who join us we pray today for unity and peace. We pray for all gathered here, but for all the many requests we receive. We pray for our religious leaders to unite, for all political parties to come together and to work for the common good 
of whom they represent, rather than score points and feed huge inflatable egos. Let us be still and let us listen to one voice, the voice of the heart, the gateway to our soul, the gateway to God. So we pray the prayer of Jesus as we pray together, our Father, Mother God, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give to all of us here and beyond our daily bread. Forgive us, Lord, forgive us our failings. Lead us not astray, but protect us, Lord, by your grace from the cunning antics of the evil one whose sole desire is to lead us away from your love. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. And our closing prayer is from the Book of Celtic Prayers. Bear with me. And I'm sure it's a blessing, yep. The love and affection of the angels be with us. The love and affection of the saints be with us. The love and affection of heaven be with us to lead us and to cherish us this new day. As I blow out this light, I say, Lord, thank you. Thank you for your healing touch here this morning. And that those who will watch this live recording, that they will sense your presence and your healing touch on them. Amen. So go in peace to love and to serve our God. Namaste, shalom, inshallah, paxet bonum. Om Shanti, Solo di Caritas, Salam Alaikum, and may the peace of your God Goddess open your heart to experience today a reawakening that you are a child of God and that your life matters to God. Till we meet again, take care. Sleep well if it's bedtime, and if not, I pray you have a good day. God bless you.